Joining us now from England is Alex Jones. As I mentioned before, he's in Europe investigating the globalist takeover. He's going to be filing reports all week, uh, co-hosting from uh, Europe as he travels through there investigating it. Uh, joining us live is Alex. Alex? That's right, David. Thank you for doing a great job. I'm going to be in the major cities of uh, Madrid, Barcelona, uh, Rome, Athens, you name it in the next week and a half reporting live on what I see, but I want to stop off a few days here in the UK and in jolly old England and travel around and see what I observe, watching television, listening to radio, talking to locals. Uh, the great news is there's a lot of info warriors. I have been, uh, we have video of this that we're going to be upload in the next few days. For some reason, my YouTube code isn't working, so I can't upload videos. Uh, but Rob is flying tomorrow to meet me, so we'll be able to get all that up and online. And just people all in downtown London, people out in places like Avery, uh, out in the countryside, people in small towns everywhere, gas stations, you name it, uh, are huge listeners, are aware of what's going on. Uh, they're Christians, they're Muslims, they're, they're black, they're white, they're old, they're young. They're aware of what's going on. But, but watching BBC television in my hotel room early this morning, I already knew about this a few months ago, but I didn't know it had escalated. They reported very calmly, David, like it was just talking about rain or something or, or, or a cricket game. They reported on that they had opened the tunnel after a month of being closed because illegals were pouring through by the thousands every day. Wow. The EU and France was and the EU and France was letting them in on the trains, on the buses. They were hijacking eighteen wheelers, started attacking people, started robbing people. Because when you let them for years pour through and just ride on top of the vehicles and the trains, soon they start robbing the trains and beating people and attacking them, in some cases hijacking them and killing them. And then uh, uh, Nico, our producer for the TV audience, has played the video many times in the last month and a half of the hijacking of the buses, the hijacking of the 18-wheelers, the hijacking of the family cars. And this is, again, because Africa is collapsing, the Middle East is collapsing, much because the West has been destabilizing it. And so I'm just watching BBC, and I just calmly report, that, well, uh, most of the tunnel traffic and ferries are still closed, but some may be open soon. And so they just report it like it's no big deal. Imagine as globalism and as Unit 21 goes into high gear and shuts off more and more resources, how insane this is going to get. But tomorrow we're going to be covering with Paul Watson and Rob Dew and myself, the city of London within London. We'll be doing call-ins. We're going to be filing reports. You're, of course, going to be writing, uh, you know, uh, basically as the conductor here or as the uh, grand, uh, oh, who's the guy in an orchestra, the conductor who's running the whole show. And all week and next week, we're going to have these reports. I'm going to be hosting via Skype and a lot more for the radio and TV audience of Infowars.com. But so much is going on here. But another thing I noticed watching Sky Television, it's News Corps, Fox News, here in the UK, uh, and also watching BBC and listening to it on radio, they are worshiping Obama. They are absolutely, he is the second coming of Christ. Uh, and, and, and if you see the architecture, if you see what's happening to the resources, it's all Agenda 21. It's all about cutting the resources off, charging people for more. It's all about creating austerity. This is absolute, total social engineering. But the good news is it transcends left to right. People are really starting to wake up and really starting to realize what's happening, David. So, again, we're going to be here with you and the crew there in Austin, Texas, breaking this down, filing detailed HD reports uh, on the ground, but also doing live call-ins, uh, all sorts of original videos, and uh, specially produced reports looking over this. Because you can watch TV. I can talk to experts. I can read the financial publications all day long. But to get on the ground, and to actually see what's happening in Spain with 35% unemployment, uh, or the UK with 45% of people on the dole or welfare, or to see what's happening in Athens, Greece, to see what's happening in Rome, uh, Italy, where two weeks ago the London Telegraph reported the city is on the verge of collapse, months of rotting garbage on the streets, uh, huge immigrant populations pouring in that the EU then puts on welfare to further bankrupt the countries. I mean, this is a front row seat to economic warfare. We're not being captured and taken over by tanks. We're being captured and taken over by banks. And so that's why I'm here in the EU covering all of this because, you know, I sent the reporters, Rob Dew and Josh Owens and others, to cover Bilderberg a few months ago. I sent Joe Biggs down to the border, and that made national news with Josh Owens. And, of course, they caught the footage of the drugs being brought in across. You were just exposing the drug war. It's not that we're for throwing people in jail for drugs. We realize the whole thing's a fraud, 
they made the drugs illegal to jack up the prices and control the population. But still, regardless, if they're telling us we're taking your rights and free to keep you safe from drugs and terrorism, the truth is, just like narcotics and just like al-Qaeda or ISIS, it's run by the criminal megabanks that have hijacked this country. They are the enemies. And if we can't identify that organization, if we can't reveal what they've done, we have absolutely no hope. But the good news is, as the real enemies are identified, as the people of the world come together, it's over. The most important thing I can say is to the listeners that I've already run into at the airport and at my hotel and then out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, again, I want to travel in the middle of nowhere, go into a pub. There's like 15 people in it, six of them know who I am and come over and say they're listeners. Six people, 15 people at the Red Lion uh, uh, Pub and Inn in Avery. That's, that's where I am right now. I'm, I'm not staying there. I'm about to leave. But the point is, I'm about to go back to London. The point is, that's what's happening. That's what's going on. That's the power of people seeking out the truth. They don't know because they're not well known. Their faces aren't known. They don't get recognized. They don't know that, that, that there's a movement worldwide awake to this. They don't know how much power the liberty movement has. So when I bring this up, I'm not bragging. I'm letting them know you're not alone. You have fellow liberty lovers from a race, color, and creed around the world that are aware of what's happening and understand that the globalists are bringing in this tyrannical, anti-human world government and that the collapse that they're orchestrating to bring in total control is imminent. We hope to hold back their program. We hope to hold back their agenda, David, as you do. But in case we don't hold it back, people need to know who did it and the way out of it because they're going to use socialism, collectivism, and total control as the so-called answer uh, to the crisis that they've helped basically create. So, David, I really appreciate you doing a great job while I'm gone and to the rest of the crew. And I'm going to go ahead and hand the reins back over to you, my friends, because it's not just about Alex Jones or anybody or InfoWars or David Knight. It's all of you that are the human resistance to the globalists in this high-tech tyranny. Thank you, Alex. It's very interesting, too, to hear you talk about how they're treating Obama as God, because, of course, we've seen the clips of him talking about gun control. But the other thing he said was, uh, England needs to stay in the EU. Don't leave the EU. And he's saying, we need you. You're an important transatlantic partner. They don't want to see anybody get out of the EU. They want to keep everybody in the EU because they are now consolidating these regional groups into the next step of global governance. But as Alex was pointing out, this global collapse of the economy, look at how it's playing out in Puerto Rico, for example. We've got um, an article from Wolf Street pointing out that UBS's Puerto Rico bond funds are imploding. Collateral value has dropped to zero investors are screwed. That's the headline. He says, we believe the probability of default is approaching 100% and that losses given default are substantial. That's from Moody's, the people that rate these bond funds. They're talking about $72 billion in bonds that were stuffed into numerous conservative-sounding bond funds spread across America's retirement portfolios. Where have we seen this before? Does this sound like the collapse of the mortgage market? Well, now they're doing it with municipal bonds in other countries, like, like in Puerto Rico. This is the way this all plays out. This is why there is massive immigration that is faster than the economies can absorb uh, from third world countries into first world countries, just as Alex was talking about going on in Europe. That's why they're doing this. They have to implode the first world economies in the same way. They've gone to all of these third world economies, after World War II, they went in essentially operating as rent seekers, setting these countries up on massive loans from the IMF, from the World Bank, from the central bankers, the same people that we see as the Troika hammering Greece. They came in. They said, we want you to uh, create a socialist uh, uh, state, and uh, we're going to loan you money that you can just turn around and hand back in nonproductive ways to the poor in your country. Instead of making people wealthy, we're going to have you put them on a welfare program. And eventually, what happens is you run out of other people's money. And when you run out of other people's money, they come in and they take your hard assets. That's what's going on in Greece. Again, going on back to Puerto Rico, they say about $26 billion in, in bonds fall into this category. Things like the government's development bank, highways and transportation authority, infrastructure finance authority, municipal finance authority. So now these 
things that would be building infrastructure, they're no longer able to support these because the, the massive overextending of credit, largely to pay for welfare programs. They're pointing out that uh, UBS is heavily involved in this. They say UBS, despite well-known problems that Puerto Rico has been having for years, was not shy about loading up its clients with these worthless bonds. Same thing we saw happen in the mortgage buildup. Remember, they collateralized all these things. They sold them out there uh, as, uh, uh, as, as good investments when they were just garbage mortgage loans. They say they encourage people to borrow money from UBS in order to buy these things. Do it on credit. Do it with leverage. That's why so many people have said we need to go back to Glass-Steagall. We need to make sure that the banks who are insured by the, uh, uh, by the countries uh, are not going to be allowed to participate in this kind of highly leveraged activity that we saw happen with the mortgage implosion. But, of course, they're doing it here. They're doing it in Puerto Rico. And they say that since the collapse of Puerto Rico bonds, the funds have become, quote-unquote, legal headaches for UBS, as Reuters put it. We see the same pattern of behavior everywhere from these banks. And now we have a massive exodus of people from Puerto Rico that are going to Florida. These are people who are U.S. citizens. They will be allowed to vote in Florida. It will change the landscape. It will change the election. To celebrate the birth of our country and give a big thanks to all the info warriors out there, we are now offering free shipping on every item shipped out of the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse. That's free shipping on all t-shirts, books, and DVDs. Free shipping on Molan Labe and 1776 belt buckles, which are also 25% off while supplies last. Free shipping on all of our InfoWarsLife.com nutraceuticals. If it's in the InfoWarsStore.com warehouse, it's shipping for free all during the month of July. It's our way of saying thanks to the true heart and soul of this operation who stand beside us and support us as we wage an info war for liberty and freedom for all. Infowarstore.com, free shipping for the month of July. <laughs> 